All right, well, markets closing the day mostly higher as we got a better than expected GDP revision. And there was also some optimism after the banks passed their Fed's stress test yesterday. But as we wrap up the quarter and the first half of the year, where should you consider investing going forward? Joining us now is Brent Schutte, Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management Company Chief Investment Officer. Brent, it's great to see you again. So what do you think that second half of the year, what that's going to look like? Yeah, unfortunately, I think it's going to be a bit tougher than the first half of the year. And so you've seen the market do well based upon the economy not yet falling into recession, but inflation coming down. We continue to believe, much as we forecast, that inflation will come down, but we do think you're likely to have a recession given all the tightening that's still in the system. And the reality that even with that inflation coming down, the Federal Reserve is likely to tighten until they see the labor market weaken. They're really, really afraid of a wage price spiral. So I think Current CPI is tied to COVID, that's coming off the boil, but the Fed is worried that inf uh, that wages continue to rise because the labor market's too tight, and that's why they're gonna continue to hike until they see the jobless numbers move somewhere below 100,000, if not into the negative area. Uh, so Brent, we had a guest on Kevin Mon earlier today who said that he thinks that this threat or this rhetoric coming from the Fed chair about two additional hikes is just that rhetoric, that trying to job on the market a bit, but it sounds like you're in the camp that there will be additional hikes and you're positioning your portfolio appropriately. There will be additional hikes. I mean, this is a very uh, depend up, disp uh, dependent upon uh, one thing. What does the labor market do? To me, that's what the Fed's worried about. If you think about every comment about 60s and 70s and 80s, it was a wage price spiral. And right now, the jobs market, the Fed believes, is too strong. There's too much demand for workers and not enough supply. And in that case, wages would rise, which could take inflation, which is now falling, and pull it higher more permanently. That's why I think it's dependent upon the jobs market. But certainly, uh, Wall Street is still looking for 200,000 jobs being created next week. Uh, that's too strong for the Fed. And if that is the case, they will hike again at their next meeting. So, Brent, do you think we could see more than two hikes, two more, three more hikes on the table here from the Fed? Again, it comes back to when the labor market cracks. I think you're starting to see signs of the labor market cracking. Um, you're starting to see jobless claims. I know this week we're down a bit because of the holiday, but the jobless claims are, are, are ticking higher. Certainly some parts are showing the labor market's weakening a bit. Um, but uh, to me, it's a question of when it, it happens. And I, I think it happens in the back half of the year, which is why I think you'll have a recession then. Um, so, I mean, this is a, a data dependent Fed. If you think about last year, I mean, they started the year forecasting 75 basis points in total of hikes and they did it four times 75 basis points. Uh, and so they are certainly reactive to the data. And to me, the one area they're still worried about is that labor market. So Brent, let's talk about your investment thesis right now. Underweight large caps, overweight small and medium cap, why? Because of valuation. And because I think small and mid caps at their current levels of valuation have discounted what I think will be a mild recession. And so typically small and mid caps don't do well during a recession because it's an economic headwind. But I think at 13 times earnings that have been marked down 15, 16% already, I think you've already discounted some of that. And I think this is an area that investors can overweight for the coming one, two, three year time period. And so I'm not gonna try to get too cute around timing that recession. Uh, and so that's the part of the market that I think will have the economy eventually become a tailwind and you have really cheap valuations and I think this is an area of the market that could outperform for the next few years. And that's why we want to overweight that relative to large caps, which are expensive based upon uh, basically any historical metric. Uh, and that's why we're, we're focused more on that part of the market right now. Brent, what about the bond market? Are you seeing opportunity there? Yeah, so we are overweight fixed income. So um, we, and that's the first time we've been overweight fixed income in years. We started overweighting it towards the end of last year when rates went last year. We started the year at 175. By October, on investment grade bonds, you were over 5%. And so if you think about this in my comments about inflation and our forecast for inflation to continue, continue moving lower, at 5%, you have real return again. And today, that bond market still yields four and three quarters. Uh, and so that's an area of the market that I think for the first time in you know three, four, five years uh, is attractive. And we want to be overweight that, especially given the reality that we do believe the back half of the year could be a little bit more choppy. Uh, given what we believe will ultimately be a recession, the market will have to sort of price that in at some point. So what does that bond to equities ratio look like in your portfolio? I mean, we keep hearing that 60-40 is no longer. No, the 60-40 has actually been strengthened. If you think about the 60-40 over the past few years, the 40% basically yielded nothing. And what you buy a bond for is typically what you get. Uh, and so now with that bond ratio, 
with that bond allocate or that bond yield somewhere around 5%, that's going to be a better part of your portfolio pushing forward from a return standpoint. Uh, and I don't think it's ever been dead, but we do think that a lot of people just believe it's the S&P 500. And if you tie my earlier comments into that, we think it should be expanded to include things like mid and small caps uh, and a little bit more of a weighting. And so we're, we're, we're um, you know, we never tilt too far away from home base or home kind of allocation, uh, but we are overweight fixed income relative to equities and commodities. Brent, always good to get your takes there. Uh, CIO of Northwestern Mutual, Brent Schutte, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you.